who can make a contribution to New Zealand. Question number nine, the Honourable Phil Goff. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Does he take responsibility for the $9.2 million being spent on the change process in his ministry this year, and does he consider that money well spent? The Honourable Chris Mr. Minister. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the figure quoted by the member is a budgeted figure only. Operational matters are for the Chief Executive. The Chief Executive has established a change team to engage in a modernisation project as he is entitled to do. The Honourable Mr Speaker, supplementary to the Minister, does he agree with the concerns expressed by top exporting groups, the Meat Industry Association and Fonterra, that the change proposals put forward could put at the risk the effectiveness of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in work critical to the New Zealand economy, and having already lost recently two of the top trade negotiators, will he risk losing more? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, it's no secret that the Minister uh, listens very carefully to the comments that have been made by the various people to whom the Member has referred. Uh, uh, the Minister himself has expressed some reservations about the Ministry's change proposals. He's conveyed his views in a matter, manner that is appropriate under the State Sector Act to the Chief Executive. The Honourable when a spokeswoman from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs stated that they had been in discussion with the Minister, quote unquote, throughout the process, and that he has provided, quote, clear direction on their priorities, end quote, how credible is it for him to distance himself from responsibility for the botched change proposals like he's just done again? The Honourable Chris Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the uh, minister, the Minister is acting exactly in accordance with the requirements of the State Sector Act. The Minister knows the rules that matters of detail are uh, for the Chief Executive and it would be quite improper for him to pass uh, to cross over that line. Uh, he's not a micromanager. His name is... His, his, his name... His name is Macaulay, not Stalin or Helen Clark. Southern question. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Yes. Order, I've called the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Is it not the fact that the Minister has made his long reputation in politics as being a micro-interferer in more ways than one? And how can he possibly expect people to understand what his role is when, as he said last Thursday, that as a Minister he was no more than, quotes, the purchaser of the ministry services, end of quotes. And does he not understand parliamentary democracy? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Oh, the minister on behalf of the minister, the minister understands parliamentary democracy very well. <coughs> the Honourable Phil Goff. Mr Speaker, is it fair for him to continually blame the chief executive officer for the mess up in the change proposals when John Allen is unable to defend himself against ministerial criticism and when constitutionally he as minister is responsible for what's happening within his ministry. The Honourable Chris Finlayson. On behalf of the, uh, I, indeed I do, on behalf of the minister it's a question of what is constitutionally proper. Under the State Sector Act the Chief Executive has the burden of responsibility in carrying out the change plan and unlike other ministers in the past, the member knows what are the bounds of propriety where a, mem a minister can act. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, given that this is the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs has introduced the hubs and spokes concept, whatever that means, uh, that has a business model applied to a serious uh, uh, governmental service, namely foreign affairs, and chose a chief, chief executive, who he now blames for everything, why does he... Don't worry, honey, we'll get around to it. Even you'll be able to understand. Right? Order. By the way, order. No, order. I'm on my feet. The member will resume his seat. Now, order. Now, members know that it's... You know, if they inter interject, sometimes they'll bring disorder, and it's better sometimes just not to interject. 
if they don't want disorder. I can't blame a questioner from responding when someone makes some unhelpful interjection. The Right Honourable Winston Peters supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Given that this is the Foreign Minister that introduced the, hubs, the hub and spokes concept, whatever that means, applies a business model to a parliamentary and, and governmental service and chose the chief executive, who he's now blaming, why does he not just resign? The Honourable Chris Minister. On, on behalf of the uh, Minister, it's not a question of blaming people. Uh, there's no secret, no secret that the Minister has expressed reservations about aspects of the Ministry change proposals. The Minister has conveyed those concerns uh, to the Chief Executive uh, and in doing so he has conveyed his views in a manner which is appropriate under the State Sector Act. What is so difficult to understand about that? <laughs> the Honourable Phil Goff. Mr Speaker. Order, I want to hear the Honourable Phil Goff. Mr Speaker, wasn't it his responsibility under the Public Finance Act to vote $9.2 million to be spent on a change process that nobody believes is credible? And if it wasn't his responsibility to vote that money, who is responsible for wasting it? The Honourable Chris on of the Minister, it's important to note that that is the budgeted figure as I said in the answer to the primary, what exactly it turns out to be at the end of the day remains to be seen. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Phil Goff. Three quarters of the way through the financial year, how much of that $9.2 million have been expended? And does that include the latest $200,000 on the heads of mission meeting or redundancy payments? The Honourable Chris Mr. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the uh, Minister, the member is sloppy with his facts. Order. Well, he is. He's wrong. What? And point I can say order, this. Mr. Speaker. Order. The amount... No order. The amount we won't have this carry on. Oh. Now, look, the, the, uh, the member has acknowledged in a previous answer that the budget amount was $9.2 million. I think the member acknowledged that. The member questioning the minister asked how much of that had been spent. Uh, at this stage in the financial year, is it three quarters of the way through the financial year, how much of that had been spent? Now that is, and, and asked whether the amount spent included the 200,000 uh, uh, cost of a, a recent meeting or something. Now except if the, if the member is disputing the cost of the recent meeting, then I apologise to him because I should not have interrupted had that have been the case, but uh, I'd ask him to, uh, the question asked was not an unreasonable question. And it was based on figures already acknowledged, except for that last one. And I think, uh, you know, to, to accuse the minister of sloppiness in asking a reasonable question is is going to provoke disorder. Now, to answer the question, on behalf of the minister, Mr. Speaker, there are two limbs to the question, and I'm answering the second limb, as you perhaps project, uh, prospectively observed. And he got it wrong. The amount is not 200,000. The projected expenditure is 154,000, and that is. Uh, what it a point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable Phil Goff. Order, a point of order has been called. Mr. Order, the Honourable Phil Mr. Speaker, Phil we've got a bit of a dilemma here because the figure I quoted was a figure that the Minister himself had used in the House last week. Order, right. order. Uh, there's nothing I can do. I mean, the, the member's question was answered. Uh, order. The, the member's question was answered and it can't be disputed by way of point of order. Supplementary, Supplementary question, question the Honourable Phil Goff. Mr. Speaker. Did he or his office seek the deletion before it was made public of the reference in the ministerial briefing to him as incoming minister that the government, quote unquote, required annual savings from the ministry of $40 million? If not, who did seek that deletion? The Honourable Chris Minister. I'm uh, an acting minister, uh, and so uh, I have. Uh, uh, I'm unable to comment on that level of minutiae about what lines were excised from a briefing to an incoming minister. What I can say is that that member, that member has constantly referred to the figure of 40 million and he's wrong. The figure, the correct figure, as the minister's told him on many occasions, is 24 million. Question number 10, Mark Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question Order. is to the Minister of Justice. What Mark is the